Welcome everyone. Welcome to Kelly's Arthrob. I'm Kelly and you may be asking yourself what's with that weird sort of deep intro? Well there's a story behind that but first let's just get into the painting a little bit. I'm masking down some curvilinear shapes in order to do that. On the outside of the curve you sort of stretch the masking tape and then on the inside of the curve you press it down and you do that kind of at the same time it's like a it's like a wiggle a little wiggle motion in a way and then of course once I get it put down I'm going to burnish it the tool that I'm using is called an agate burnisher which is used in illuminated text they use it to burnish the gold paint down to make it shiny. So a little bit about the theme of this painting. I've been doing some research on how to work with galleries and in order to get a show at a gallery, one of the requirements is that you have a collection of cohesive artwork, probably around some kind of a theme or social issue or some kind of symbolism and that would be compatible with the gallery or the show that the gallery is putting on. Your work would fit in with that. I don't feel ready to show at a gallery at this point because I don't have a cohesive body of work around specific themes and I do have things that I feel strongly about and I want to convey in my art. So it's time to start using that in the process. And that's what this painting is about. In this video, I'm going to be going back and forth, talking about the theme, where it came from, and how I'm creating the painting and the piece of work here. So now that I've got all of the masking tape down, I'm going to create the background. I'm doing a wet on wet technique where I just wet the paper and drop in paint of various bright colors because the symbolism for the background is basically all the good stuff, all the things that we would like in our lives, the good stuff, the, um, the things we aspire to, or our desires, our dreams, experiences we want to have, achievements we want to make, um, relationships we want to have, um, the, you know, just the best of life, all the things we want to go and explore and enjoy and soak in. As always, I'll leave all the supplies and materials I used in the description, but honestly, something like this could, this background could be achieved with any kind of watercolor you want to use. Um, I think cold press watercolor paper would be best. And um, as always, I use 100% cotton paper for this kind of stuff, any kind of quote unquote serious stuff. <laughs> I use the good paper. If you're interested in the colors that I'm using, these are core watercolors. I'm using cerulean blue, quinacridone magenta, dioxazine purple, nickel yellow azo, quinacridone burnt orange, and transparent pyrrole orange. Quinacridone burnt orange is not a color that I used a lot, or quinacridone gold, um, but I'm starting to really like it, and I'm a little bummed that they are going to be discontinuing that. Uh, I think it's pigment PO48. They had already discontinued PO49, so I'm a little disappointed. If they ever discontinue nickel yellow azo, I'm going to be in trouble because that is my absolute favorite yellow. It's the one yellow that I always keep in my palette no matter what. 
So I hope they never discontinue that. Now that I have the background the way I want it, I'm taking a dry brush and I'm picking up any puddles of fluid that are sitting there because I don't want any cauliflower in this particular background. I waited a little bit too long to try and sprinkle some neutral tint in and it was just too dry. It didn't disperse the way I'd hoped. It's not bad. I don't mind it. It just, I waited too long. The background is dry, so now I'm going to pull up the tape. This is kind of a delicate procedure. You have to be very careful or you can damage the paper as you're pulling up that masking tape. One thing you can do is to take a hair dryer and warm the tape up. It will come up more easily. I'm really pleased with how cleanly this tape masked everything off. Nothing seeped underneath. And I think the secret is burnishing it down gently so that there's no gap between the tape and the paper. Now I'm going to make chain links out of these curvilinear lines. And I'm using a Chinese calligraphy brush. I think I talked about that in my last video about how I had gotten some Chinese calligraphy brushes as a gift and I hadn't used them yet. I was going to try them with ink. But I decided to try them first with watercolor before I uh, I don't know how the, it, it would work if I used them with permanent ink and then uh, washed them out and tried to use them with watercolor. So I'm using them with watercolor first and I have a variety of sizes and this one made very nice delicate lines which is what I wanted to put shadows. I'm trying to give these chain links some dimension so that they look like metal gold metal links. I chose chain links and chains as the symbol for this piece of art. And chains can mean a lot of different things to different people in different contexts. We use chains for fences and it's great. I mean, this is my yard, that's your yard. Um, my dog can go and play inside of this fence and be safe. My little kids can be in the backyard playing inside the fence and they're safe. So in that context, chains and boundaries and fences are really good. And I mean, sometimes we're actually freer in my experience inside of a good boundary. We know we're safe in there. We can be ourselves. We can kind of let it all hang out. But outside of that boundary, we have to project ourselves in a professional way or in a way that's acceptable to the larger group. Or, you know, maybe it's just not anyone else's business for us to just let it all hang out. So. I'm not saying that boundaries are bad. I think boundaries are really, really good, especially when they're used in a positive way. I want to give a little trigger warning for anyone who's been part of a high demand organization or a cult. I'm going to briefly talk about that because it's a little, it's what started the theme for me. Um, so, I don't want to trigger you if that will bother you. You might want to mute this part. When do chains and chain links and fences and boundaries become toxic? That's kind of the theme of this piece. I got the idea when I was watching a documentary on cults and nobody starts out wanting to join a cult. keeping in mind that this is just my perspective and it's what occurred to me while I was watching the documentaries and what inspired this theme. So um, I'm not, please don't take it that I'm an authority. This is just my take on it and 
how I interpreted it and put it into this piece of art. Basically, it seems to me that people get involved in this stuff because they either feel like they're lacking or their family's lacking or their relationships are lacking. Something is lacking and they're looking for a way to improve it or fix the situation and they don't know how. So they find a group or an organization and whatever the message is, it speaks to them and it's golden. It's perfect. And the next thing they know, they're getting like completely drawn into it. And maybe for a while, the organization is really good and it's, it's a positive thing. But then somewhere along the line, things change and gradually they get toxic. But they're in so deep, they've invested everything, their time, their money, their energy, and no matter how bad it gets, they can't leave because as bad as it is, what they feel like they have to lose is more important. There are an awful lot of people who are in cults, way more than I thought. Um, a cult doesn't just have to be behind a physical wall or an impenetrable fortress of some sort. It can really be just mental. And I always thought that I was pretty immune to this kind of stuff personally because um, just my personality is a flutter. I don't really like to be stuck in one group. I don't, I like to have a variety of friends and a variety of influences and a diverse group of people around me. I am not a joiner, right? I mean, the minute someone says, we'd like for you to make a donation of this percentage of your income every month, and we'd like it to automatically come out of your account. <sighs> No, <laughs> absolutely not. Go away. It's not happening. Or, uh, yeah, we want you to spend X number of t hours a week. We have these uh, events we want you to participate in and you need to be available. And no, 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 no. I just, as soon as that happens, my spidey sense comes up and I'm just, I don't want any part of it. It just, I literally become very anxious when I get approached to be part of that kind of a thing. But there's another way people get involved in cults, and that is fear of others, fear of what's happening in society or world events. And I gotta tell you, that's probably a vulnerable point for me. Um, I, I'm constantly worried about what's gonna happen in the world. And, you know, I'm just dreading the next election cycle because I know what we're in for as far as news and propaganda from all directions. I don't care what side you're on or who you want to vote for, it's just going to be brutal. And, and that got me thinking, um, you know, all of these thoughts are happening, uh, inter intertwined in watching these documentaries and, and just living daily life and having conversations with people. But it seems to me that a, a lot of us are ingrained in certain belief systems or uh, we're vulnerable. And it's, uh, it, it's not exactly a cult, but it kind of is. Okay, I'm gonna take a moment here to talk about what I'm doing. Um, to make these chains look like chain links, you know, make them look dimensional. And 
I didn't have a reference for this. I did look at a lot of different pictures to see and you can kind of do your own thing because so much of it depends on the lighting and uh, I just found that what I did was pretend that the light was coming from above pretty much directly above and so I put shadows uh, where the light isn't shining <laughs> is that too obvious but okay one of the main things that I noticed when I was looking at chain links was that um, as the shadows you know it's it's a round it's a piece of wire that's in a sort of a circle and so on the top of of it the shadow is underneath it but then when you come down to the bottom of the chain link um, it's on the opposite <laughs> sort of anyway so I had to make a transition there I'm, I'm sure I'm not articulating this very well I'm sorry I'm not a teacher I'm a facilitator <laughs> I can I can show it to you and I can point you in a direction but I really can't I'm sorry I'm just not a teacher um, that's how I homeschooled my my younger kiddo too and hey he's do he's done great on his placement test so um, my hands off approach worked <laughs> for him anyway another that's that's a different video for now. <laughs> For now, we'll go back to the theme. We'll go back to the heavy, the heavy stuff, okay? Um, and then I started thinking about world history and how dictatorships evolved and regimes evolved. And so it's not even just cults, it's countries and world history. And, you know, it's very, very heavy stuff, you guys. And this is the kind of stuff that goes on in my head a lot of the times. So for that reason, last year, I just completely quit watching the news, except for once or twice a week and never any opinion pieces, never anything that didn't really resolve anything or give anything tangible, but just kind of made people anxious and made them continue to watch I just cut all of that out and I have to tell you I feel so much better and so much more at peace and whether or not I watched the news or not did not have one iota of effect on world events it's not a jersey that if you quit wearing it your team is gonna lose it's a chain for me it, it was a chain it was something that kept me locked in constant anxiety and I broke that chain and I got out of it and I'm free of it it's a little thing but it has made a big difference in my mental health and those are the big chains those are the big gold chain links but what about our own personal chains you know, the ones that we do to ourselves, chains within chains. And I still have a lot of those myself. I have a lot of bad habits. Um, I still overeat. I don't smoke anymore, um, but I'm still too sedentary. And um, I don't know. I still, I know these things are bad for me and it's very hard to change. It's tough. So I suppose bad habits are one thing that we, they're a personal chain. Um, I think maybe sometimes bad relationships or bad friendships, and those are caused by feelings that maybe we're not worthy of having um, certain friendships or I don't know 
like I, I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back to times when I was uh, less, I don't know, less healthy. And, you know, friendships where um, you perceive this person as maybe having something that you don't have. And I, I'm not talking about belongings. I mean, personal qualities. And you're drawn to that person because they have what you perceive in yourself as lacking. And that can set up a really bad dynamic for, and I've only had a couple of those in my life, I'm happy to say. But where this person kind of knows that, they know that, um, they know that, that they're the top dog in the relationship, in the friendship. And sometimes they can say and do things that are really hurtful or cruel. And I think that that's because they themselves perceive something that's lacking. And this, this friendship kind of fills that, that void. And the more that they can sort of point the finger at uh, your insecurities, the less they feel their own. And I have very, like I said, very thankfully only had a couple of those, probably when I was a kid or a teenager, young teenager. And really, those are things that you just kind of have to figure out in life. And what teenager doesn't have insecurities, right? All of us did. I mean, I, I really don't know anybody, even people who seem to have everything. And when you find, when you look more deeply and go beneath the surface, there can be a lot of things in there that cause them a lot of great pain. So, that's another thing I guess I learned growing up is that um, golden chains are still chains. Yeah, and addressing personal insecurities. I've had the artwork for this, this video for almost probably a week. And I have rewritten the voiceover for this probably 10 times. I've had a lot of trouble articulating what's going on in this because it is very symbolic, but it's also really personal. It's also really, it's, it's macro and micro. I mean, this is, this is some deep, heavy stuff. And most of the time I'm like trying to entertain you guys and give you a laugh. And this is very serious. And <laughs> I'm not sure how well received it's going to be. It, some of you guys may be like, hey, Kelly, I came here to escape from all this crap. Why are you, why are you harsh on my buzz, man? <laughs> but th that's, th the thing is, um, if I ever want to be in a gallery, these are themes. These are things that they want to address. They're not looking for you know, the surface, shiny, happy people. They're looking for the guts of it. And where I don't want to like dwell in that all the time, I think it's definitely worth, it's definitely worth delving into now and again. You know what I mean? So I hope you guys don't mind. And I'm sure I'm going to be told if, if this is not your cup of tea and you don't want me to produce videos like this again, I'll probably hear about it. And that's okay. Um, as long as you're, you know, respectful, I don't care. You can tell me that this is not your cup of tea. It's probably, it's not going to be like the, the new direction of this channel, but 
every once in a while, I'm going to share it with you guys, you know, what I'm working on, the deeper things. Because that's just, it's part of who I am. It's part of me. It's part of my journey as an artist. It's, it's probably part of yours too, maybe. I'm using a pen tell. I'm using a variety of pens. Actually, I am using a micron pen for the smaller personal chains, and I'm using a brush pen for the larger ones because there are bigger chains and littler chains. There are some chains that are heavier and harder to break. And then there are some that are just, they're little threads. They haven't, they haven't grown into or become something more significant. They're, they're baby chains, I guess. And, you know, maybe some of those chains are beneficial. Some of them, maybe not. Some of them are bigger than others. Some of them are just little micro chain. At any rate, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm, I'm actually very proud of it because um, I think a symbolic piece of art should have a lot of layers to it. It should be like an onion. It should speak to different people on different levels about their own personal uh, whatever it is, you know, and I think that this piece does that. I think it can be, it can speak to society at large. It can speak to groups. It can speak to the individual. So I normally, you know, I don't put all of my artwork for sale on my website, um, but this one I put up there. So if it spoke to you in any way, you're welcome to own it if you'd like. Um, my website is kellysartthrob.com and so you can go take a look at my website and take a look at my art there and listen it's you guys know me better I'm not gonna leave you on a down note so I've got a couple of jokes for you okay hang on okay here's a dog joke for you there are three boys and they're watching a fire truck go by. The fire truck's got its lights on and the sirens on and they notice there's a dog in the back and they want to know what the dog's job is. The first kid goes, I bet he's crowd control. The second kid goes, nah, I think he's just the mascot. The third goes, the third kid goes, well, I know what he does. He finds the fire hydrants. And that's Sam's opinion on the matter. He's right. It wasn't a very good joke. Let me see if I can find another one. Hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you call a lazy kangaroo? A pouch potato. <laughs> I used to run a dating service for chickens, but I was struggling to make ends meet. <laughs> I was going to tell you guys a time traveling joke, but you guys did like it. <laughs> what did the snail who was riding on the turtle's back say? Whee! Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Because every play has a cast. Okay, that one's not a very good one. Okay, let's see. Um... What do you call it when a snowman throws a tantrum? <laughs> a meltdown. <laughs> okay, that one's good. <laughs> My uncle named his dogs Timex and Rolex. There it is. Watch dogs. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, you guys.
guys. Bye! No, but seriously. Break those chains, man. Get yourself free. There's got to be more than one way to leave your lover. <laughs> okay, bye for real this time, you guys. Bye. Smooches. Uh -huh.